Okay, the first thing I've got down, a little reminder, and make sure I'm a little structured. Uh, pros and cons of the West Highland Way. There wasn't really any cons at all, it was all pro, it was all good. I enjoyed everything about the walk, regardless of uh, ups and downs, we'll get to later. <laughs> uh, I noticed along the way they were upgrading certain parts of the, the walk, and I think I saw the upgrades round about the Log Lomond area. And the Got uh, diversion paths round about it, nothing major, just like a hundred yards round about little parts of the trail. Uh, and I found it, yeah, fine. The directions are the only thing I would say about directions for me personally as a first timer. Uh, I think they could have had a few more of those stumps. It's just a big wood, brown wooden stump with a yellow arrow telling you where to go. And sometimes along the trail at the beginning, there's different uh, icons on different uh, stumps for different walks or different areas and things. So it was confusing for me at first when I got stranded on my own. Uh, on the second day, I wasn't sure where to go. I had to use the GPS, which saved me. That was a really good thing. I'm glad I brought that. Uh, so at times at directions, uh, arrow points. And when you see ahead at points, there's maybe two different areas. So, and that's all you get, so I would say make sure you have a map, and if you can uh, get a good GPS, like my Garmin 64S, that was a really good one, and it really saved me from getting lost. So be aware of that. The terrain was mixed, uh, one part of it you're on crossing the roads, other parts uh, you're on the muddy trails, and for some of the walk, like uh, the last stretch of Loch Lomond, and uh, parts going into the Glencoe area, lots of rocks, lots of constant up and down, turn around bends, uneven ground, loose rocks and stones, and uh, so make sure you've got good boots to protect your ankles and your the, your feet basically with that, and uh, any things you need for knees or whatever. There's definitely a difference with the the terrain. Financially, it depends how long you're doing it. And it depends on what way you're doing it. Are you doing it the way we did, with carrying everything on your back, pitching the tent at the campsites a couple of times? Hopefully, you maybe get the bothy for free. Uh, we paid five pounds one night for a tent pitch. Other places had it like seven or eight pounds per tent. Wigwams are a bit more, twenty-five, thirty pound, which we, you can split between you. Uh, I would say, if anything, it. I spent, I, I was going to actually look and see exactly how much I spent, but I didn't. But I would say you would need at least a couple hundred pounds doing it over like <clears throat> the seven to ten days as we did. Maybe more depending on how much fun you want to have as well with a few halves. Uh, I noticed out of all the places I, I kind of found, I may be wrong, but I thought the beech tree near the Glen Glenglein distillery in the first day, I found that to be the most expensive from anything I bought. Uh, I got a burger and fries and a pint of Pepsi and I think it came to like £16 something. And I think if I remember right, most uh, places I had a meal, even up Glencoe and Kinloch Leaven and things, it was under a tenner for burger and fries and they were the same quantity. Uh, and obviously it wasn't a five for a pint of Pepsi, it was a couple of pounds. So I found the beach tree a bit more expensive and that was the first stop we had along the route. Uh, so on average you're paying about 10 to 12 pounds for like, burgers or a, a macaroni cheese or something like that, you know. Uh, so financially I would say make sure you've got a, a good bit of money if you're planning on buying food like that. I, I pre-planned thinking I would be okay with uh, some stuff in my food bag. That was okay to fill a space but most of the time I was eating. And you want to eat a good meal after those hikes anyway so even if you don't plan it you probably will. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that helps in terms of pros and cons that I've got down. Next thing I've got is uh, people's case about fitness. Now, I've lost a couple of stone in weight since last year, and if you look at my very first videos on YouTube from just a year ago, you'll probably notice a difference. And I'm getting more comments this week since people have seen me. I think the walk itself has actually helped me lose a bit more as well. This is actually quite baggy. <laughs> But uh, I've actually got over 6 inches off my waist and uh, these jeans I couldn't even pass my hips last year 
and now I can have my hand and a fist and move it even along no problem at all. So I need, I've spent a lot of money in the gear, I actually need to get a new wardrobe for casual wear. But uh, in terms of physical fitness, all I did to get to where I was, wasn't training specifically for the West Highland Way, it was just a case I went back on a healthy eating plan and I was at the gym three times a week and most of that was actually body toning with weights. Uh, I was getting into a little bit more circuit training and one day of cardio and recently I started playing five side footballs on a Monday evening. None of, like I say, none of that was to get me fit for the West Highland Way. I always was active all my life from martial arts to swimming, having a bike all the time, always playing football. But the last few years I let myself go big time and I did a Monroe last year when I was heavy and I really struggled. The West Highland Way, I did not struggle one bit with physical fitness. The only complaint I had, the feet and the boots, as you know if you've been watching my videos. Other than that, I had nothing to complain about, nothing to do with my lungs, my heart, my mind, nothing at all. Everything was great. And uh, a lot of people seem to go on about this devil's staircase. I never had a problem with it. And the same with Conic Hill. And the same with going over the hill at Kinloch Leaven. Uh, I stopped most of the guys that day, they were taking it easy, but I, I physically felt great. Uh, just keep yourself hydrated as you go along. I'm not a great big water drinker actually, I've probably drank more water, one to two litres a day on that walk. And that's a lot for me compared to what I usually drink. I've never been a great water drinker. But uh, the water's a lot nicer up in the Highlands, and if you use a Sawyer filler or things like that, which is on my shopping list, uh, it comes in handy all the more. But uh, Physical fitness, I was absolutely fine, personally. I had no problems, and it really made me realise uh, I'm actually a bit better at these things than I've let myself believe the last few years. Uh, the last few years have, have just been a slide down, I've put on a lot of weight, and you know, confidence seems to go down, and everything else that comes in with that. But this walk, for me, really helped me realise I'm still young in a lot of ways. I just turned 30, believe it or not. And uh, I would say I've got a lot of life in me and mental fitness was really the case for me as well because of the state of my feet in the second day, I had to keep going on. I was almost coming home the second day of it Kill with the weather, the way everything was going, lack of experience. So uh, yeah, I would definitely not worry about physical fitness. We met many people along the way, all different shapes and sizes and ages. Some old guys there have been doing it every year for the past 20, 30 years. They're retired, some of them are a lot heavier than others. They're doing the B&B each night with the walking, enjoying it now. And from mid-afternoon they're getting a good uh, drink down them. And they're still up the next day doing the walking. Doing it at your own pace, you'll get there. The thing I found better going up the hills. It was better on my feet for starters. Incline seemed to have been my friend. Uh, do small steps even faster small steps if you wish, rather than big leaps and rushing, because that'll just wind you and you will be tired. Small steps each way along the way will definitely get you, uh, get you there just the same, and you'll be better for not being so knackered. <laughs> yeah, so just do a little bit, maybe a training a couple of months before, get out a bit more walking, make sure your boots are getting broken if you're getting new boots. I think the people have had the same complaints with me in terms of blisters and that wasn't because their boots had faults with them like mine did. They had new boots and new boots are not broken straight into the West Highland Way is not a good idea. So uh, a couple of months before it, more walking, a bit more cardio run type of thing. Get yourself ready for it. But don't make it this big mental blockage that you have to be super fit. You're not doing SAS selection. And uh, if you're doing it with a group, it's up to you how the group decides. We met a group along the way. It was a, a group of ladies doing it. And uh, I would say they were in their 40s, 50 years of age onwards. They are going along no bother at all. And uh, their rule was to go as fast as the slowest person. And they're there as a group. They've got everything booked. They're using the courier service, all the rest of it. They were fine. Uh, but we, I kind of felt when I was with the guys, the group disintegrated to the three, I was pushing on to keep up with them, that's the way it was, and if anything, that's another thing probably worth pointing out as well, to me the challenge of 
I wasn't knowing what I was walking into, <laughs> not in terms of the walk, but organisation. And uh, once you've got all your gear packed and all the rest of it's one thing, you start on the walk. But when you're coming off a stormy hill, drenched in rain, having to set up the tent and soaking grass or whatever you're doing, something like that, if that's the way you're doing it, make sure uh, you're effective and organised and disciplined. And one thing I've learned by example of the guys was as soon as they were there, the tents pitched up, all the dry bags are out, changing the clothes into clean clothes, having the showers or whatever, taking the old clothes, washing, drying, packing them away, getting it done and dusted straight away. Don't take a break after the walk and go to it an hour later. Just get it done. And it's the same when you're up. Again, it's up to you and your situation. I felt my situation along the week. I had to keep it going because I could easily just kill time and wait an hour or whatever, whereas the guys were more effective. And uh, I became more effective along the way, quickly getting the tent packed up, quickly getting everything organised and packed in the dry bags, in the rucksack, and, and having a breakfast then, and then going, rather than saying, oh, I'll do it after my breakfast and things. So be effective, be efficient, be organised and get it done. You'll be a lot better, you'll feel mentally a lot more positive if you do it that way. And for a personal challenge, following that example of the guys, that's what evolved for me. And I, hopefully I'll keep that up. I know what I'm getting into next time. Any time I do a, a camp or a walk or whatever, that's the way I'll be from now on. Uh, in terms of the people I met on the West Highland Way, uh, plenty of Germans, more Germans than Scots probably. I met a big group of uh, Marine cadets from Holland. Met a great couple of guys from Israel. Met a couple of Spanish, a couple of French, a couple of girls from Belgium, get a good laugh with. And in the last couple of days, uh, a small few from uh, Australia and some living in Singapore. I got on great with everyone, new friends met, we've exchanged the Facebooks and emails and whatnot. So uh, great memories made on there. One thing I would say in terms of the people you're meeting, there's a great common like-minded theme of being away and being free. Yes, being free. <laughs> the computer going. Uh, I definitely I found I would say a restoration and well, faith in humanity has been restored with the people I met. There's no speaking of warfare or political agendas and crime or anything like that. It was a case of people coming together in a civilised manner, happy, joyful and free. And it really did restore faith in humanity for me with kindness and uh, lots of laughing. And uh, the people I met along the way were absolutely fantastic. The first the video I did in my first solo camp last year, I saw every hour on the clock down the local woods. Uh, but in the West Highland Way, I'm, I'm setting up a tent next to people who are doing the same in the middle of nowhere. Never once had a paranoid thought of the people round about me or the people I was speaking with. The people I encountered were absolutely brilliant. And uh, it was a great experience. So uh, never worry about the people you find in these places because they're, they're all great, I found anyway. And uh, it was definitely worthwhile going even just for that reason. So the only thing uh, I'd like to talk about now, I've got my cat cane all over the place ready to get washed and organised back in the cupboard. Things I didn't use, if you watch my kit video, you already know what I took. Uh, I'd point you to that if you get an idea of doing the West Highland Way. Hopefully the playlist of all the West Highland Way this year is on it and you'll see my kit. Uh, one thing I didn't use was the camping stove, uh, the windproof thing for the camp stove. Uh, I didn't need it. The places that we were staying in, even the campsites, there's places there where you could cook and there's no need for any wind covers. Uh, even the times we used it outside the gas was fine so 
that could have been space and less weight. Another thing I actually, I'm looking for, it's in front of me. The other thing I didn't use, apart from the one night in the Bothy, which I think is part three, is the, the camera and the tripod. I didn't use them apart from that one night. I could have stopped along the way and got more better uh, video and photographs using the camera, the Nikon camera. But uh, the idea of taking the pack off, getting it out to do it, put it back in and going, it just wasn't appealing at all, even on the good days. Uh, so all my video actually, 99.9% .9 of everything you've seen in my videos came from this little guy, my HTC Desire mobile phone. And as much as I like good quality videos and want to do good quality myself, I'm actually really surprised and happy with uh, what it gave me. Uh, so I could have probably saved between two to four pounds in weight. I would say with the camera and the tripod as well as the space. The flip flops I used with, were okay, but I think like Derek used those keen uh, sandals for airing plus good sewing on them. I'm looking at it, maybe invest in that, or maybe invest in the Sawyer water filter that's on the shop list as well. I'm definitely getting a new pair of boots, and I've got great news. I'm really happy today. I went down to go outdoors. I, so I showed them the boots and I told them. From the beginning, I suspected there was a fault because I did experience a little bit of uh, wetness in the first time I used the boots on the damp uh, pavements when I was breaking them in. I thought no more of it. And then the West Highland Way, the rain puddles, it was clear that there was something wrong. And during the course of the week, when I looked at them today, there's about that, about a two inch uh, cut along the Vibram, Vibram sole and there's a lot of flat metal sheath starting to stick out so there's definitely something wrong and as soon as the guy saw it he was surprised so uh, good news is after having them for a year and only recently getting put through the test they offered me an exchange or a refund and thinking they've let me down that one time and knowing to get a better pair of boots I says give me the refund and I'll put them towards a better pair which will probably be a bit more expensive so that's the plan. I'm looking at boots just now and uh, if you've got any good ideas leave the comments about good boots you like. I'm looking at a couple of expensive Mammoth ones, uh, Salomon I think it is, but the man in the shop pointed me towards I think it was a German kind, Needle, Mendel, something like that. Uh, so I've been looking at them as well. So if you've got any good ideas of good boots please let me know. Take pity on me after watching these videos. So I'm really glad we go outdoors doing that, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, all my wet proofs were great, my Bear Cows Hurricane Jacket served great in the stormy weathers and all the rest of it. Rab Down Jacket, night time you saw me wearing, no complaints. The only other two items I'm going to say out of the whole kit that I thought were really good and it's new to me was the, the walking poles. And these are cheap and cheerful, they were only a fiver, high gear. I think mean, as, as much as cheap and cheerful isn't great with everything, high gear always seems to have done well. It's a high gear uh, wind cover stove. The high gear base layers were only a fiver. I wore them every day. They uh, they served me great in terms of keeping me warm just with a jacket over me if I needed it in the rain. I never felt cold once during the walk with the body heat and they did the jobs great. Walking poles I'll always use and I'm even thinking of using these with the tarp set up and hammock camping which I'm hoping to do this week or two. So stay tuned for that. And the only other thing I was surprised that I really enjoyed wearing was these shorts. Just boxing, Everlast shorts. I think the material helped with the chaffing uh, and the Vaseline I used because I was starting to get a little bit of chaffing. Don't take cotton underwear like regular underwear or socks because they just keep the cold and, and the, the retained sweat and things like that. These helped with a bit of Vaseline on until I got to Tindrum at the Green Valley shop where I bought the cycling shorts because they had a good wick, I think it has a call wicking or something. The guys advised me to get Under Armour uh, underwear because it prevents chaffing, period. So that's one thing I'll be investing in as well. And uh, the other thing I bought was the Bergus, the Bergus waterproof 
trousers for fifty pounds. I got them in the same day. I got the shorts, and I have to say, those ones I had at ten pound for the suit, the storm suit. It was like in a greenhouse in a sauna, in a sauna suit, and I just tore them off one day when the sun was out, and that was them gone. Waste of time, waste of money. And uh, that wasn't a cheap and cheerful thing, but I'm glad I spent the extra bit and getting the Burgess ones. They were absolutely amazing on. I felt great with them. So I'm glad I bought them along with the shorts, which were there. Chaffin disappeared straight away, so I can only advise you to, to get something like that. If anything I can advise you buying is make sure you have enough compute plasters for blisters even prevention of blisters and certainly for treatment of blisters and the other thing was the assorted sizes of dry bags you can never have enough dry bags and you can never have enough compute plasters that's it <laughs> uh, another thing that got through the challenge was the Osprey rucksack waterproof cover done great in all the weather it came with it and there was plenty of rain and a great storm day and it done well I don't know if it's just the way I've packed it or put it over, but there's been a little tear. So I'm just going to patch that up. In terms of the water for that, it did great. Yeah, so I think if anything I had to cover, that's it covered. Uh, yeah, everything served great for me. Apart from the boots. I'm done. I'm done with the boots. Hopefully the information I've gave to those who are watching this is helpful. Especially for first timers like myself. Uh, I just therefore would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for uh, their support, uh, the positive comments, both on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page. So if you're on Facebook, find me on uh, Facebook and like the channel. I'm going to be using it to put all my videos on and then I'll give them the opportunity to put on photographs, comments, keep people more updated. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank, uh, as I say, for the comments. A lot of people have been very helpful, very supportive. And when I read the comments of how people are enjoying the videos and they've got information from them and they've really enjoyed how I've put it together, etc, etc, it really makes me feel good and uplifted. and. It motivates me to get back out there and do more, and I put a, I put a lot of time and effort into it, and this is a hobby for me. That's all I do is a hobby, and it does it. It can be quite time consuming with the editing and just even to set up the equipment to make the movie and things like that. My imagination's get a thousand one ideas what I want to do, so uh, it's great to see comments uh, like that with support and just to thank everyone so far who has subscribed everyone has gave good comments and good advice and uh, hopefully more videos will be coming soon of hammock camping and hopefully some more walks and bushcraft I need to get more into the bushcraft so uh, yeah stay tuned and thank you very much